What's going on guys? This video is going to be about the things that I wish I had known before I became a PL. If you don't know, I was an engineer in Sapper PL. Some things that I just kind of like noted down, I just want to share that with you guys before you guys take on to being PL and hopefully this will help you out. First thing is your platoon sergeant counseling. When you are in Bullock, you have some sort of assignment where you're gonna do a sample platoon sergeant counseling and then you will one day do it in real life when you become a PL. And the biggest thing that I could tell you is to have bullet points and don't read from the counseling form when you're talking to your platoon sergeant. It should be more of a conversation, a discussion versus you just pretty much reading the entire essay. So with that being said, you want to have bullet points and extrapolate from that, expound on it. and you want to really clarify and delineate what you expect from him and also give him a chance to address what he expects from you again it is a plan okay you want to have a plan of how you're going to lead the platoon together how to organize everything for the platoon how to make the platoon successful in the counseling you want to assign responsibilities you want to have some lanes okay yes I am a proponent that it shouldn't be officer lane and NCO lane or officer business and NCO business it should be leader business but with that being said though like both of you cannot do everything and both of you have your own expertise so you want to have some lanes you want to assign responsibility but at the same time you want to be able to reinforce each other support each other so you should be able to do some of the things that he does and he should be able to do some of the things that you do if he's on leave or he's out sick or whatnot he could backfill you and at the same time you could backfill him so assign lanes but at the same time know each other's lanes make sure that he counsels the squad leaders as a PL, you have your platoon sergeant and your squad leaders to help you out, right, to lead the platoon. As a PL, you will counsel the platoon sergeant and the squad leaders. At the same time, make sure that the platoon sergeant is also counseling the squad leaders. Make sure he does that periodically because there might be some things that the platoon sergeant is seeing that the PL is not seeing because the PL is not always with the platoon all the time because you're busy with the company operation and the leadership in general. So make sure that the platoon sergeant is also counseling the squad leaders and that PSG is feeding you information so that you could use that for your own counseling with the squad leaders. In the counseling, you just want to mention also in general anything personal related because that is the platoon sergeant's kind of expertise so leave initiating flags removing flags appointment into yours and all that uh, what initiating flags and removing flags means is that whenever a soldier quote unquote gets into trouble you want to initiate a flag and then they'll get some sort of hearing from either the PL the platoon sergeant or usually the company commander so that's called initiating a flag the platoon sergeant should be doing that and then at the same time once the period of punishment is over then you want to remove that flag and usually like when a soldier's flag they can't do a lot of things like for example maybe get a pass enlist or get promoted get awards so you want to make sure that they're getting initiated and move at the right time so that they're not getting punished extra long but they're not getting punished at all that's kind of my tips on platoon sergeant counseling if you need an example I could give you my platoon sergeant count that I used I got very good feedback for the counseling so I could definitely give that on to just email me I'll leave that in the link below and you could use that trackers make sure that in the counseling you talk about the different trackers that you want to have the platoon sergeant track as a PSG they're most likely a senior E6 or E7 so they should already know these things but just to kind of remind them that they are in charge of personnel actions and that is kind of the expertise they're laying. So make sure that they're tracking leave, the different schools that the soldiers go to and the NCOs go to, med pros, NCO ERs when it's due and how much longer they have until it is due, all the appointments that the soldiers have. And these trackers, it should not be just in the platoon sergeant's computer, it should be published so that the entire platoon and also you especially can see physically out on the open. Make sure that he's tracking, that he needs to have these trackers and he's periodically updating these trackers. Also, I would say have a personnel board, a alert roster, CQ, staff duty roster, and again, post them in locations where the entire platoon could see it, including yourself. And I would post it in multiple locations so that no one is not getting the information on time. Sergeant time training or STT training, it is usually done on Thursdays in most army units. And what that is, is for the NCOs to kind of focus on some basic fundamentals, some basic fundamental MOS training, the soldier skills, and it's NCO led so you want the platoon sergeant to kind of take lead on that and make sure that the squad leaders are really investing the time to make a good sergeant time training plan because that's gonna feed into your squad level and your platoon level tasks 
and then eventually to your metal task, right? Which is your mission essential task list that feeds on to the company and the battalion level. STT training, usually it is done weekly, every Thursday, sometimes every other week. The officer, you as a PL, you're going to kind of help resource it and COs are in charge of it, all right? So you want to make sure that the platoon sergeant is making sure that that is being done and he's kind of spearheading that aspect of the platoon training plan. PT, on the PT calendar, make sure that you and the platoon sergeant have a solid PT calendar and you guys should know four weeks out of exactly what's going on every single day. What I have seen is that PT calendars are usually kind of organized by the NCOs with some input from the PL. I don't know how you want to run your platoon. I've also heard that some PLs like to do their own PT calendar, but I think that as a PL, you already have so many things to plan out. One of the things that the PL should also be doing is to supporting the NCOs make their own plans. And I think PT plan is an awesome way for them to get involved in the whole platoon success. So in my opinion, each squad leader should be given like a week to plan out. So that helps them to organize and how to plan out an operation. So have a solid PT plan and get that approved by your platoon sergeant and by you and publish it. Make sure that the soldiers know what they're going to be doing, where they're going to be doing it. So they can plan out according to that too because the PT plan is great and everything. But usually most soldiers, they like to also do PT on their own. For example, let's say that we're doing a push-up set of drill on Monday morning, maybe on Sunday they will not hit chest and triceps. So if they know beforehand what the PT schedule looks like, they can plan out their own PT schedule according to that, all right? So you don't want to hold on to information. You want to publish it, announce it as much as you can. It is for the betterment of the entire platoon of all the soldiers. OERs, first of all, OER stands for Officer Evaluation Report. That is kind of your report card from your Raider. If you're a PL, it's going to be your company commander. And then the senior Raider is going to be your battalion commander. So a captain and a lieutenant colonel usually. That's report card and it is usually done annually to kind of show you how well you perform in that position and what you can do to do better. But usually when you get an OER, your Raider needs to know what you have done throughout the year. Yes, like he has seen you do a lot of things, but there are many things that he has also not seen you. So what you feed him is something called the OER support form. And this support form is where you pretty much type in exactly what you have done throughout the year. And he uses that and he modifies it a little bit to make the OER. The better your OER support form is, the better your OER is. You want to have good material, good substance to your OER support form so that the company commander, the captain, can write you a good OER. My tip for OERs is gonna be that I have an Excel file of everything you do. So weekly, I would just update the Excel file so that when it is time for your OER support form, you could just use that Excel file and you could just plug and chug with all the accomplishments that you have done. Because what you don't want it is OER season and you don't have much to talk about because you simply just have forgotten what you have done. Because a lot of the things are kind of mundane, repetitive things that you do every single week. But there are those few things that are not as repetitive, not as mundane, something special, but if you forget to highlight that in your OER support form, then it's like you've never done it, right? So keep Excel file as a living document and make sure you update it weekly, uh, if not every day, so that you don't forget anything that you have done your entire time as a PL. Another tip is uh, counsel your squad leader constantly. I would recommend once a quarter and also after major events so that they know how they're doing because they want to make you successful and they want to get feedback from you. Give them some pointers, help them get better, and help them help you. PT, I'll say physical training, you should be a stud. You should be leading from the front and leading by example. PT should not be something that you're bad at. As a PL, as an officer, as a leader, you are the example. So be good at PT. If you have to take extra time to do PT so that you could do well on the PT test and be good in front of your soldiers, take that time and do it. That is part of your job description. It is expected from you as an officer, as a leader, to be good at PT. The most important thing I'll say is be good at running. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. Know your soldiers, make sure you talk to them, learn their strengths and weaknesses and empower them. Soldiers should not be afraid to talk to you because you're an officer. They should like you, they should respect you, they should admire you, and you should talk to them as a friend. But what I mean by that as a friend, I don't mean that they should be bullshitting with you all the time because you have other work to do, but they shouldn't be scared to talk to you. They shouldn't be scared to approach you and address some issue or concern, like whatever they have you. You should be approachable. Uh, but at the same time, you are in charge, so you have to keep it professional. So it's a fine balance. Bottom line is you should be able to learn about them and you should be able to know how they are as a soldier versus just knowing their rank and the name. Make sure you have field manuals and technical manuals.
signals with the FM and the TM. Every time you go to the field and you know what you're about to do, make sure you have FM and a TM so that you could use that theory, the doctrine, to base off what you're gonna do in the field. Once you have that doctrine, theory, then you could talk to your NCOs about it to modify it, do that operation. Because as an officer, usually, unless you're a prime enlisted, you don't have much experience to base off of your plan on. So you want to have some foundation by reading the doctrine and then talk to your NCOs, your platoon sergeant, your squad leaders to really plan out. But you have to do your homework, so make sure you bring the FM and the TM in a little binder and like whatever you have to the field so that you could read it and then talk to your NCOs about it to make a good plan. Dispatch process, what dispatch means is that in the army, you just can't take vehicles out like that. There's a process in how you take a vehicle out and that's called the dispatch process. So there's a form called a 5988 and this form is pretty much a form where you address any deficiencies this vehicle has. So the dispatch process, the way it works is that the driver of that vehicle is going to go through this 5988 form to address any issues that this vehicle has. With the dispatch form, you also have the driver's license and uh, there's another form that kind of says where the vehicle is getting driven to, what is the period of the travel, and so on. And then this form is kind of given to a mechanic to verify those issues, those problems, and then the mechanic signs off saying that yeah, these problems are verified and they're confirmed. If the problems are severe, which makes the vehicle non-drivable, what that means is that it is deadline. So if the vehicle is deadline, that means that that vehicle cannot be driven off from the motor pool. But if it is not deadline, then the mechanic is going to sign off saying that yeah, there are some problems, but you can still drive it. So once the mechanic signs it, then the XO or the CO has to sign that dispatch request. Then the dispatch is printed from the mechanic's office, from the clerk's office in the motor pool. And then you use that form and you put that in the vehicle so that you could actually drive the vehicle. Property book as a tool leader, property is one of the biggest things that you are in charge of. So let me just quickly talk about property books and how that all works out. Before you become a PL, one of the things that you will do is inventory all the property that other PL has. So when you inventory everything, make sure that you inventory all light items at the same time so that Joe is not trying to fool you because he lost it. You will inventory everything and as soon as you inventory everything, Everything, I would sign everything down to your squad leader. So let's say you have three binoculars and you have three squads. So you inventory it and right there at the spot, sign it down to the squad leaders, to one binocular or a squad leader. Just to go on more about inventory and the property book, I can make another video about it. But some terms to know are LIN, NSN, and storage annexes. So LIN is called a line item number, NSN is a national stock number, and storage annexes is exactly what it sounds like. It's a storage annex. So let's say you have a vehicle that will have a lint. So instead of saying a Humvee, you'll have a alphanumeric code for that Humvee. That is the nomenclature. That's a lint, the line item number. But within that Humvee, you have many different parts, right? So within the lint, you have many different NSNs, which is national stock number. So you have different parts of the vehicle, so you have different NSNs to the lint. So that is how you keep track of all your property. Within the LIN, you're missing some items, some parts of that LIN. You will put that in the shortage annex. Your shortage annex is going to have a bunch of NSNs, a bunch of items from that LIN that you're missing. And the way it's supposed to be is that that shortage annex, it is submitted to your supply sergeant so that he's going to try to order those parts so that your shortage annex is eventually reduced to diminished. That's how it works. If you have any more questions, which you will, I'm sure, I can make a entire video on property book because that is a long and tedious process and it will take some time for really going through it in detail. Cyclic inventories, that is something that is done monthly. So the way it's going to work is the Battalion S4 will tell your company commander that, okay, for this month, these lens needs to be inventoried. So the company commander is going to inventory, let's say, five lens for that month. 10% is done every single month so that over a year almost 100% of the entire company's property is inventory because essentially yes as a platoon leader even though you're assigned for stuff the company commander is signed for all of that stuff so the company commander is in charge of all the property and then he signs it down to the PL so he's going to inventory every month typically inventory 10% of the property book so that he has a good live update as to his property stuff and it is all kind of done alongside the supply sergeant some other things for property book, make sure you have a summary of the property book in the front page. So what I mean by that, you want to have the nomenclature, the LIN, then you want to have the name that you use like colloquially. So let's say the LIN is 3416 Alpha. No one knows what that means. So have the nomenclature of it, so that's a Humvee, right? You want to have that. You want to have the quantity that you possess like as a PL and who it is assigned to, like what squad leader and where it is located. 
So with this summary sheet, the length, the nomenclature, the quantity, who is assigned to, and where it's located, the summary sheet is going to be super helpful if the U.S. appeal are gone and this inventory is going on. So your platoon sergeant or the squad leader, the like team leader, they can look at the summary sheet and they can do the inventory with the IU. So it's a living document and you should be updating it once a month so that it is accurate. Staff duty. Staff duty is pretty much a point of contact when the BC or the or the battalion XO are not present. So every officer does a staff duty at least I'll say once a month. It is a 24 hour thing that you'll have to do and you are pretty much like on call right? if anything goes wrong. You have staff duty NCO, you have staff duty runner, and then you have staff duty officer. So the NCO and the runner, they're located in the staff duty desk in the battalion office, and they are pretty much addressing all the day-to-day -day issues of what's going on. You as a staff duty officer, you are on call. So you don't have to be co-located with the NCO and the runner in the battalion office. You just have to be within a 15 minute recall. So what that means is that if you live outside of the 15 minute, then don't go home, stay in the battalion office. But you're on call, so you're allowed to go to bed. You just have to have your phone on you so that you could answer the phone call if needed. Usually you need it for like SIR or anything like that so that they can call you and you can address to it. As the staff duty officer, you are the representative when the BC and the XO are not there. It's a huge responsibility, but that is one of the things that you will do as an officer. Something else that you will do is check. So every six hours, you'll check the key sensitive areas to make sure that everything is fine throughout the day. So some place that you will check is the motor pool, make sure that it's locked up during the nighttime. You will check the barracks, make sure that nothing crazy is going on in the barracks, you know, like no one is trapped or unconscious in the hallway something like that and you also check all the arms from. you have a little roster where you input the time that you checked it and you initial off and then you have your own personal roster to say yep i checked this this places and this time and in initial so all those checks it doesn't have to be done by the officer you could split it with your nco and you because the key difference for staff review with between the nco and the officer is that the nco gets the next day off but as an officer you don't you're expected to work the next day. So you want to sleep when you have staff duty as much as possible, but at the same time, you want to like split the work with the NCO. But with that being said, it's up to you how you want to plan out, how you work that out with your NCO, but just a little summary of how staff duty works. For OPT, which is Officer PT, usually it is done once a month. The biggest thing I'll say is just be good at Frisbee because the officers, they love to play Frisbee. As an officer, as a PL, you should really plan out. That is your job, right? You are a planner. You should plan out for the next day. Make sure that you're not wasting your soldiers and your NCOs time. You want to employ your NCOs and your soldiers properly and effectively and efficiently. If that means that that day you have to spend some extra time after work, after 1800 to plan out for the next day, that's what you have to do. What you don't want is you just have your and just there for no reason just wasting time so plan out for the next day know exactly what they're gonna do know exactly where they have to be what time they have to be or uniform so that you're not wasting their time if you don't have anything for them let them go with the job they will spend a lot of time away from their home from their family so anytime you don't need them when you're in garrison let them go home don't just have them wait around for direction for no reason if there's nothing going on but with that being said don't let them go home early every day then they'll just think that they don't train they don't do anything you need to plan make sure that you have a good car that you don't mind getting dirty as a pl most likely you'll be going to fuel a lot you'll be going a lot of ranges you'll be running a lot of ranges so you'll be doing a lot of recon of the ranges. So I will recommend you get an SUV or a Jeep Wrangler or something with a four wheel drive. Don't get a sedan because you might need to drive to different places because you need to plan out. Usually, yes, you can take out the Humvee everywhere to recon, but as I've already explained to you, the whole dispatch process, it is somewhat cumbersome and sometimes time is of the essence. So you want to be able to get there soon. Consult with your NCOs all the time. Every day, I would, like after PT, I would have a quick huddle to talk about that day and have frequent meetings with them. Don't have too many meetings with them where you're wasting time, but have enough meetings with them so that they know what's going on and they're involved in the plan. They should not be blindsided. Anytime you have information, don't hold on to it. As soon as you have any information, give it to them so that they could work on that. They could rehearse their plan too. And as changes come, which they always will, then give them the changes, but give them the information as soon as you can so they have it in their mind so they can start planning out. When you're doing your op orders, which you will, as a PL, you'll do a lot of op orders. It should not be one man effort. It should not be just you doing the op orders. Involve your squad leaders in your op order process so that they know the plan because they helped you build the plan. Definitely involve them and even have them brief a certain portion of the op order. You don't have to plan and brief the op order entirely by yourself. Use your NCOs, use your squad leaders to help you plan and brief the op order for the entire platoon. That keeps them getting bored, that keeps them involved, and that keeps the entire operation more dynamic. 
accountability board. What that means is to have a board where you could keep each other accountable. It's something that I did pretty much in the tail end of my PL time, which I thought was super useful. A lot of the times you'll have things that depend on different people of the platoon. For example, a squad leader may have a leave form from his soldier, from one of his squad mates. That leave form is submitted to the PL for signature, and then the PL gives it to the platoon sergeant, and then that PSG's job is to give a leave form to the company operation to be processed, and eventually it'll go to battalion. But if let's say the PL doesn't sign it and give it to the PSG, or the PSG doesn't give it to the company operation, then the leave form just kind of like fell through the cracks, right? So you want to keep each other accountable so that nothing is kind of lost in the cracks and everything's actually done. So what I did was I had a board and I split it up into different boxes. Like I had first squad, second squad, third squad, and then two more boxes for the PL PSG. So anytime I wanted the squads to do something, I would put it in their squad box. And anytime the squad leaders wanted the PL or the PSG to do something, they would write that in the PL or the PSG box. This way, it is out of the public and I know exactly what I have to get done, the PSG knows exactly what he has to get done, and the squad leaders know exactly what they have to get done. So this is accountability board, something that I just came up with. This way, nothing is kind of lost. It's not like he said, she said, it is out on the open. So when you enter the army, you're always getting paid. There is no unpaid time and uh, like, like you don't you don't go on leave and not get paid it is not like the civilian sector right you're always getting paid so the way leave works is that you have 30 days of leave every year but weekends do count once you enter active duty you're getting paid you submit a leave form saying i want to go to this place and you sign it and then you attach your les to show that yes you do have leave days accrued your les is going to have that that will get submitted to your supervisor so usually that's your captain your company commander he will sign it and then it will go to the bc the battalion commander for his signature this is if you're a pl so you need two signatures all right let's say you are a squad leader then the squad leader will sign it and then the second signature will either be a platoon sergeant or the pl and then the company commander is the third signature so don't think that when you're on leave you're not getting paid that's something that i thought but that's not the case the last thing i want to mention is tsp tsp stands for thrift savings program this is the 401k plan of the military of the army it is a great system it is very very good it is all filled with index funds the best thing i could say is that invest in it invest in tsp make sure you do it because it is an amazing program with very low expense ratio uh, what expense ratio means is that they don't charge too much money to manage your money I will say invest in any funds in the TSP except the G fund because the G fund gives you very low rate of return. So invest in anything except the G fund. My recommendation, again, I'm not a financial advisor or a CPA or anything like that, but that's my advice. And if you are a young PL, uh, I will say read the book Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. That book is going to be super duper helpful in teaching you how to invest. It's a long book. It's about 600 pages. Take your time reading it. It's going to show you the rudiments of investing. And I will say that anyone and everyone can become a millionaire if you know how money works. And that book, Money Master the Game, does it. I'm not being sponsored by them or anything like that. I just think that that book has helped me tons and uh, I would definitely read it. Every little dollar counts. So invest whatever you can. You have your own obligations, I'm sure. But I will say invest at least 10% in that every single month and it will make you a millionaire. Read that book and you'll be very glad you did. All right, guys. So that's about all the things that I want to talk about in this little video. If you want to learn or if you have any questions about my PL experience or anything else, please let me know. Just, just comment or like email me. If you want to get the platoon sergeant counseling form that I use, I could email it to you. I'll leave my info below. You could use that. I could give you the trackers that I have that I used when I was a PL. You could also use that. I could give you my Excel file the OER support for myself file that I still use now because I'm still in the army I can show you that I can email that to you let me know if there's anything else that you want me to make videos about so like share subscribe all right guys bye